She broke the beauty queen stereotype by taking off her crown and becoming an investment banker at one of South Africa's top banks. This is Woman on Wealth and I'm Nozi Pombanja. Tonight we profile former Miss South Africa Peggy Sue Kumalo. We find out how to make small businesses work with business coach Suzanne Stiles and in Power Redefined we bring you the woman who controls one of the largest beverage companies in the world that's PepsiCo Chief Executive Indra Noy. Pegasi Kumalo was crowned Miss South Africa back in 1996 and is proof that you can have both beauty and brains. I sat down with her to talk about why she chose to give up the pageant glamour and move into the corporate world. I think it's, it's, it's been a very interesting journey and uh, it's been very transformational for me as a woman, in particular being a black woman. Um, and I think that I am so fortunate, yeah. if I may call it, that uh, my journey has mapped out the way it has. Because I think that when you are, as you rightly pointed out, there is this notion that as beauty queens or, you know, I, I usually say ambassadors, you know, Miss South Africa's, you, you know, people always question, is there more to her than, you know, meets mm. the eye? And there's always more. I truly believe that. And I think that for me to have had the journey that I had, and I think even when I set my sight on Miss South Africa, there was a, a, a deeper burning ambition inside me that was mm. beyond the pageant. And I think the platform that a Miss South Africa creates, because we should never underestimate the platform itself as well, yeah. it does empower women. And I think it's up to you as the woman or the young girl, what do you do with it? And what mm. do you eventually um, you know, do with yourself? And I think for me, I always had this very deep burning desire that I wanted to go to university and I wanted to do something that would have a huge impact, not only in my life, but yeah. in the broader society. Um, and at the time, I mean, law was something that I wanted to pursue as a young girl. And I, I, and, and I thought along those lines because I wanted to defend the vulnerable in yeah. society. Um, unfortunately, you know, it life didn't has pan turned out, out that out, way. Exactly. So, so life has turned out very differently. So why banking? And, and how did that come about? Look, I think it's, it, it, it came about purely on the basis that um, late uh, President Nelson Mandela asked Mr. Stephen Kossoff, the CEO of Investec Bank, to sponsor my studies. Um, and, and that's just how fortunate and privileged I've been as well. And, and obviously Investec, um, you know, um, the fundamental pillars of, of an investment bank are financial markets and, and economics. Mm. Um, and so we had this discussion with Mr. Kossoff and he said, look, if you want to pursue your studies, you're going to have to look at these two disciplines and then decide what it is that you want to do because when you finish your studies, you're going to have to come back and work in the company. And you know what, I have no, in, initially it, it was very daunting, it was yeah. overwhelming because I thought I don't even, like I have never had exposure to the disciplines. I mean, as you would have an appreciation, uh, when you come from a public school right. and back then it was even much harder and very, you know, um, when you went to a public school, I don't think you sort of ventured into the disciplines that public schools or public schools offer these days. So it was daunting, but I went for it. So I did both my undergrad and postgrad at the University of Manchester in England. Yeah. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I love what I do. It has transformed me into a woman that never um, had the kind of mindset that I yeah. have and the kind of thinking that I have about wealth creation, about the economy, about certain variables and their impact on people's lives. Let's talk about wealth creation. There are a few formidable women who have managed to create a sizable amount of wealth for themselves. But if you were to give an insight into how to sustain that wealth as a woman, um, what kind of advice would you give out? Look, I think the, the, the wealth creation space is something that personally, um, it has been a learning journey for me as well. And, and I think, Nozipu, you'd have an appreciation that, you know, one of the things that I um, had to accept and, and probably really embrace when I came to an investment banking environment was the fact that, you know, as as black people, we don't come from a family that will talk to you about the stock market. We don't come from a family that will talk to you about 
um, you know, trust um, trusts and, 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 and money market funds mm. and, and, and trust units and all of those, um, you know, products that you could actually invest your money in. And so for me, getting into the environment and understanding that, look, there is a stock market and in this stock market, you can actually pick the stocks and start building your wealth. You don't always have to receive shares or options from your employer yeah. and then take that and cash it out and use the cash. You can actually sell and buy shares and put them in a portfolio and then grow your wealth that way. So it's been, it's been an incredible learning experience. And I think for me, every woman should actually um, you know, take time out to find out what sort of investment products are available, mm. uh, whether it's from fund managers or just investment banks where they offer money market products or um, they offer products where you as an individual. Yeah. And obviously, you know, with any investment, there's risk taking. So, you know, we always need to be conscious of that, that obviously when you invest your money, you will lose some of it because there is risk inherent in any financial, um, you know, instrument uh, or financial product yeah. that you invest and in. And of course, there are very few women that we see playing in this in, in this space, and in particular as portfolio managers across many of the investment houses. Um, what has your experience been? Do people see you as a beauty queen first or as a banker first? And does either or work to your advantage? Look, I, I, I hope they see me as a banker and I think they do. I, I think the, the and, 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 and that's also t up to you as, as an individual. I, I've never made the Miss South Africa um, like you know, my ticket to, you know, to invest tech, right. for an example, if I may use invest tech. <laughs> I've never made that my ticket. I've always made it as, um, you know, this is who I am, accept me for who I am. And, um, you know, and, and, and the great thing is that I think given the fact that I've had 10 years of banking experience, people have overcome that. I mean, I, I guess you will meet people and people have different perceptions about you as an individual. Um, but what has worked for me is the fact that I think I've come into this industry, I've, I've, I've got my hands dirty, I've started right from the bottom mm -hmm. and I've worked my way up. And, and, and I've loved every moment of that because the more you put in it, the rewards are even greater. Um, and, 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 and it is a very tough environment because it's very male dominated right. and you have to always you know, make sure that your voice is heard. And I think sometimes as women, we, we get into a situation where you want to be the man at Investec and even though you are a woman. And I have always made it a point that I will be the woman that I am, embrace my, um, my, 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 my femininity, yeah. embrace you know, the fact that this is me, you know, I'm yeah. emotional, um, you know, I, I'm strong, I speak my mind, um, I'm very principled, I, there's certain things so that I So you're not apologetic for being a woman and that's, no. I think, the biggest thing. No, I'm not. I, I, I love being a woman. I think we should all embrace <laughs> being women. You know? Peggy Sue, thank you so much uh, for making the time to talk to us today. Suzanne Stiles tries not to dwell on the fact that 8 out of every 10 business startups fail, but rather coaches entrepreneurs to make sure that their businesses succeed. Earlier I sat down with her to find out if there are structural impediments that still make it harder for female entrepreneurs to succeed. In the past it was a lot more difficult for women to get financing, to get loans approved. But um, at a recent event I actually heard from some of the leading people in small business banking and they are changing the way that they actually lend to women, that they are making it a more level playing field. But there are different structures mm. that are problematic for women and it really is stems from a self-belief in women that they can achieve, becoming bigger than a self-concept that may be like within them that they can't do things and also I think the fact that they need to realize that you don't have to have a lot of money to start your project. Mm. So startup was one phase of it but expansion is another phase where again it seems as if women have a trouble breaking through that barrier of being a micro enterprise into becoming a medium-sized enterprise. Why is it that we're so afraid of growing? I think what it comes to is you get into a comfort zone. You've broken through that fear when you started your business. You get to a level where you're managing. You've maybe not as successful as you want to be, you're not getting the income that you want, but you're getting a steady relative amount of business. To break through that barrier, and it's a wonderful term that you've used because it really is a terror barrier, mm. you've got to then have the same amount of desire 
to become bigger that you had to start your business in the first place. It's not all about funding. It really is about your own self-concept and getting past a concept that you had that you should have had a small business. Mm. We use the word small business and people believe, as women especially, that means that you stay small. Small business in banking terms is an annual turnover of up to 15 million rand. That's There's not nothing small. small about that. Not at all. Now you've also written a book um, and you've entitled it very interestingly when it comes to, you said it's, it's, a, it's a guide for African entrepreneurs, but you've, you've broken up the Africans and highlighted the can part. Absolutely. Why is that? Well, what I did was actually used a little bit of a play on certain um, brands out there saying, I deal with African, I can, entrepreneurs. And the book is written in the way that so many entrepreneurs, when they speak to us, the language is, I can't. Mm. I can't get funding. I can't start this. I can't do that. This won't happen. So it's all in mindset, because if you believe you can or can't, you're right. So the book is written around, it's, a, it's called The Small Book of Declarations for African Entrepreneurs. And what we've done is we've given 52 declarations and on the back of each declaration is an exercise. So it's like business coaching in a pocketbook. What do you mean by declaration? So you will say there, um, I choose to be a successful entrepreneur, I can succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's a declaration. Now there's quite a difference between an affirmation, which is more a desire and a want, to a declaration which is an absolute promise that you're going to behave in that way. But with, that Afri with, with the I can declaration on the back, we give you a coaching exercise that you can do by yourself that will give you the power to enforce that declaration. What has been the impact of the book on entrepreneurs thus far? What we've done is the book is brand new. It actually only came out in the beginning of July. So what we've done is taken it into areas where we've done community development training and entrepreneurial um, training and it's gone down very, very well because it is coaching in a pocketbook. Mm. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. Let's take a look at PepsiCo Chair and CEO Indra Noy. Sitting in the top 20 of the latest Forbes Power Women's list, this chairman and chief executive has not let the sluggish performance of the global economy weigh in on her company's performance. Under her leadership, PepsiCo has outperformed the market consistently. She's also known for breaking ranks with other female corporate giants, dismissing the idea that women can have it all. Unlike her peers, Noi acknowledges that at some point, balancing family and work becomes a zero-sum game, and she's not afraid to admit that she's chosen work. That's all we have time for for this week's episode of Women on Wealth. Remember that we love talking to you on Twitter. Follow me at Nozi Pombandra and don't forget that our hashtag is WOW410. Let us know who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered. <laughs>